Hi, welcome to Overcoming Medical Hair Loss Summit. Today I am with Sarah Degel. She is a clinical hypnotherapist and a coach. And I'm so excited to have you here today, Sarah, because you are bringing tools that I would love to implement. They're not right now in my toolkit, but I cannot wait to hear what you have to share with us about hypnotherapy. So Sarah, welcome. And yeah. Let's do this. I'm so excited for this interview. Yo, me too. I'm so excited that you have brought us all together in this platform so we can all share our information and our tools because um, it's definitely needed uh, for the medical hair loss community. For Absolutely. sure. And I know not only you have tools, but you also have your own story to share with us. I do. Uh, which for me was amazing to know that there is somebody out there that has gone through alopecia and is now practicing some of her own tools. So let's hear about that. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah. So I've essentially have had alopecia for 35 years. So um, I was diagnosed at a year and a half. So I was a complete baby um, when I had complete hair loss until about age 10. And then from 10 to about mid 20s I had lots of spotting huge bald spots um, and sometimes would almost lose um, not quite a full head of hair but seemed like close to it so I've been through quite a bit I guess you could even say I'm a veteran at having hair loss now um, but yeah I've been through the ringer um, again diagnosed very early uh, in childhood as a baby um, and then I had my own baby who also has alopecia. So when she was a year old, and we know that it can be hereditary, um, she lost her hair. And so that obviously um, was like all my stuff came back when I was working with her and really just trying to, to help her bring her hair back. Um, in addition to my hair loss, I also have vitiligo, um, which I know a lot of people who have alopecia also have another autoimmune disease and many of us also have vitiligo. So I kind of had a w double whammy there, but like I said, I guess I'm a veteran at this stuff because I've just, I've been through it all. Hair growing back, hair loss, coming back, growing in white, white spots all over my body and face. So I didn't really realize how powerful, um, you know, that story might be to share with the world. All right. So I would love to hear from you what has been the best thing that this autoimmune diseases have brought into your life. Because one of the main things and the purpose for me to do the summit is to highlight and help us live with this, right? So what has been the best thing that has come from you, for you, from having yeah. this? Um, it's been, I don't want to say about overcoming because I don't know if it's something that I will ever fully overcome. I don't think it's when I get a huge ball spot. I got one in the back of my head right now that I'm ever fully confident and ever feel completely awesome or amazing with it. But it has been able to work through this, do the stuff that I do, clearing emotional baggage that might be tied to it. Um, it really helped me do what I want to do. Follow my purpose, you know, to be an entrepreneur, be a coach and be a hypnotherapist and just do things scared, I guess, because I don't know if I would have ever taken the steps to like leave a corporate job and the whole thing that, you know, us entrepreneurs do, um, scared, but with alopecia and especially having it so young. And I mean, when I, in, as a teenager, like I, I can't even tell you like the stuff that I went through, I'm sure it'll resonate with many people, but you know, the whole bullying thing, just being almost completely bald, like just being a total outcast and being able to work through those emotions and all the stuff that comes with it and coming out on the other side and just having those tools that I can now use still. Um, when I do start losing my hair again, when my daughter starts losing her hair, um, in other ways, again, like with my business, I've just been able to come through and do things just in a more confident but still scared state, just being able to work through those fears, I think is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost like, you know, you're not going to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. It's, exactly. And now I'm laughing, but it's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. I know when I was there, it wasn't funny, but you know, you're, you almost learn to, to see things for what they are. 
mm-hmm. right? Or at least that's the way it was for me, uh, or the way I see it now. I I look at um, what I'm experiencing because I'm still experiencing. I mean, this is it's not mine, yeah. right? Um, that I still get to live my life, mm-hmm. whether I'm experiencing this or not, right? Like I get to separate both things. Uh, this is what it's happening to my body and this is who I am. Yeah. I get to see the difference before I would look at myself in the mirror and hate what I was looking at because that was me. Mm-hmm. Now I know that I'm more than what I'm seeing. Exactly. So, no. Yeah. I get that. It's just life doesn't stop. Like whether or not your hair is coming out in the moment, um, it just, you don't have to go and, you know, hide away. And I think when I was 12 or 13, I did that. Um, and I was just been able to work through that. And just now, you know, as an adult nearing 40, um, it, that's just not a thing anymore. I still get to live my life, but I still also get to accept that I have the bad days. I still get to accept the fact that I've got a huge white patch of hair surrounded by a little circle of baldness and I don't want that to show. <laughs> I don't, I can do whatever I want to do that makes me form, feel more comfortable. So, but life just doesn't have to stop. You can still work through whatever comes your way. I think right. But yeah. And, and part of the reason why I wanted to create the summit is to bring you guys tools and resources that can help you with that. Because I've mm-hmm. also discovered that it's not one um, solution, right? There's not going to be the one thing that is going to bring you your hair back or the one thing that is going to make you look better. It's a holistic approach to life that is going to get you to the other side because it doesn't stop with one thing. It's, it's, it's our attitude. It's our mindset. It's our support system. It's how we're eating, how we're living, how we're sleeping. It's all the things that are going to take you to the other side. And that's why I'm bringing and bringing all these amazing experts. And today, Sarah, you're going to share with us about hypnotherapy. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about hypnotherapy. Um, Basically, hypnotherapy has just completely changed my life, Um, not just as a hypnotherapist working with other people, but for me personally. So coming into this, I wanted to be able to provide you tools that you can do yourself. So many times when we get the diagnosis, when we start seeing our hair go, um, we, we tend to give up a lot of our power because we don't have the answers. And for most of us, there are no answers. There's no true way to heal from this um, or proven way. We just get, you know, tossed sometimes to doctors and nothing against um, the medical field. I am always impressed when new things come forward about how to work with these conditions, but still there's not a one fits all solution for people. Um, Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. So, We tend to give our power away, and I just want to give people the tool that gives you your power back. So instead of feeling helpless, instead of feeling out of control, uh, jumping from different thing to different thing, at least you know you have some control over yourself, over your emotions, over your own healing, and that's really what I wanted to bring to the table with the talk about hypnotherapy. Awesome. And you said self-hypnosis? Did I hear that right? So how does it work? (laughs) <laughs> Self hypnosis. So we're gonna get to that um, uh, at the end. I'll help you. I'll show you guys a tool that you can use yourself. But yeah, self hypnosis is a thing. It's something that you can do yourself. It's hypnosis is basically similar to a deep state of meditation. It's actually easier because meditation you're just trying to be quiet, <laughs> which a lot of people have a hard time with. Um, Self hypnosis. It actually it's something you can do. I have healed vitiligo pretty much all over my face. Um, I'm sure um, you guys will get a link to my website um, in the email process, but I'll put pictures on there. I'll write a blog, blog post. I used to have like a huge vitiligo sp- spot on my forehead. Two that are repigmenting right now on my cheeks, and that's just been because of hypnotherapy. And just like with the alopecia with vitiligo, I've done it all when it comes to seeking treatments. So, and I've also actually healed um, spots, hair spots um, in various places. So. Um, and self-hypnosis is incredible for, you know, the emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that for sure. Yeah. And so part of the reason I was so excited to bring you on is because in the last decade or over a decade now that I've been living with hair loss, I've tried everything under Mm -hmm. the sun. Um, 
I have done PRP, which is plasma something, something, plasma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For you guys that, that know what that is. I've done plasma, I've done uh, cortisol shots, um, medication, you know, every shampoo under the sun, um, like um, x-ray stimulation, you know, all the things. And I've also heard multiple times alopecia is an autoimmune disease that the has no cure. Right. Up on now. Yeah. Right. Now I get to hear from you and I've experienced myself that you had growth. Mm -hmm. And so right now I am at a point in my life and I know all of us are at different points where yes, I do accept that this is my diagnosis but do I accept the fact that my hair is never going to grow back? No, I'm not there yet. And I don't know that I'm ever going to be there. Mm -hmm. So I love things like hypnotherapy and all these alternative options that we have to see what's out there. Right. right? Mm -hmm. I think personally, and guys, I have doctors in the summit. Okay. <laughs> I'm not against medicine. I'm just saying that maybe we still don't know what's causing our autoimmune disease because it's not only alopecia. I feel that there are a lot of um, illnesses or diseases that are out there. There's just, oh, it's autoimmune. Done. Done yeah. That's the explanation and you get no more. So I feel that exploring these things like hypnotherapy might open a door to something mm -hmm. that will help us with growth. And just, I know you're going to go into this, but just to, to share a little bit about what I've experienced is that I, I haven't seen like full growth as in like it has come back to, um, you know, the way it was when I was little, but I have parts of my head that had no hair that then got it back. And I want to identify, which is going to be my question for you. If there is a way to know, like, what was happening at that moment in my life that caused that? Because I think there has, there has to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I want to dig deep on that. So tell me more. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I can get in. Do you want me to get into this, the hypnotherapy specifics? Like what yes. it is? Get into yeah. the whole thing? All right. So hypnotherapy, it's basically a gentle and relaxing form of self-healing. It's not mind control. So I'll just say that first and right off. So um, that's the biggest thing because I, as much as in my world, I feel like hypnotherapy is starting to be well known, then all of a sudden someone will come up to me and think it's just weird, woo-woo, and it's, it's just, mm -hmm. it's not. And I love woo-woo, trust me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's, it's a very valid form. And I say self-healing, and I'll get into the specifics, but I cannot do anything. No hypnotherapist can do anything to you. You are part of the process of the healing. You are part of the allowing. So hypnotherapy, it's not stage hypnosis. So if that's all you can think of, and I know when I started, that's all I could think of was my senior year in high school when we had the stage hypnotist come up and I pretended like I was hypnotized, but I totally wasn't <laughs> on stage because I didn't want to get off the stage. Um, it's nothing to do with that. So if that's the only thing you've really seen, you know, Stage hypnosis is fun and entertaining, but um, it's not how it's used for healing. It's not how it's used for um, um, helping yourself. Um, hypnotherapy is a solid and repu reputable healing modality. Mm -hmm. um, hypnosis, so the state of hypnosis, is it's a natural state. It's the same as deep meditation. It's the same as trance. It's sa the same as daydreaming you actually go into natural hypnosis multiple times per day. So for sure you go into hypnosis, you know, as you wake up and as you fall asleep and you are definitely hypnotized from TV. When you watch television, I think it's after six seconds, the television and I think all screens do like this refresh, this very fast refresh that you don't even see with, you know, your normal eyes. But when you just sit in front of the TV you pretty much go into a state of hypnosis. It's a brainwave state, so it's actually this measurable scientific thing. And pretty much when you watch TV, not to weird everyone out about TV, but think about what you're watching and all the pharmaceutical ads that you see in commercials, that stuff is just penetrating your brain because you're just, you're wide open like a sponge. Um, 
when you go to casinos and malls and you're just your senses are overloaded, pretty much any time your senses are overloaded, you're in a state of hypnosis. So we all go through it multiple times per day. So I always laugh when someone says they can't be hypnotized because you can be. We all do it as a natural state. Um, the basis for how we operate and make decisions and act in relationships and just the basis of who we are is 95% habituated behavior from the time that you are one to seven. Um, and in this time period, while we're growing up, we are in the constant brainwave state of hypnosis. So we are in a constant state of alpha or theta brainwaves, not to get too geeky on you. Um, but during this time waves, and of course it's been measured, um, we are in a state of hypnosis. So basically, if you think about all the things that you um, absorbed at that time as a sponge, energy of other people, values, belief systems, um, ideas, it basically created the foundation of who you are today and how you act today. Mm -hmm. So... You spend a good majority of your childhood in hypnosis. So again, hypnosis is a reputable form of healing. I just really want to drive that one home just because it's been accepted by pretty much all medical and psychological institutions. Um, the American Medical Association actually endorsed it as an orthodox form of treatment. So nothing even alternative. And I love alternative healing and all the energy work and all the different modalities, but they actually endorsed it as an orthodox form of treatment for a lot of things. Um, same thing with the British Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Dental uh, Association. Um, don't know if you know this, but I mean, hypnotherapy is used for dentistry, for actually numbing pain for people who may be allergic to anesthesia and also to help people remove fears of having dental procedures. So basically all these institutions um, endorse hypnotherapy. Um, it's commonly known for weight loss and anxiety and stress right. relief and smoking and nail biting and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So those are the normal things and it's extremely beneficial for Absolutely. those things. Yeah. Um, the other thing where it really shines is pain management. So chronic pain, fibromyalgia, cancer, um, chronic pain that you know that you know the cause of. If you had an accident and you've got chronic pain from the accident, um, it's an excellent tool for that and related symptoms that can um, accompany a lot of these conditions. So hypnotherapy is also used in open heart surgeries. I didn't know this until I became a hypnotherapist, but um, there's actually a YouTube video. So if you're curious, you can always get on YouTube and pull up these videos where they literally use hypnotherapy because the patients can undergo anesthesia mm -hmm. and that's the only pain management that they have and they're cut, they cut people open and they're doing open heart surgery. So I thought that was cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, hypnotherapy during childbirth. I think you guys get it. That's it's, it's, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's everywhere. It is accepted. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't think there is any, well, any, well, maybe there's still, yeah. There's a little bit, and there's, about yeah, it. there's still the stigma because people just have that idea of stage hypnotists in their head and people mm -hmm. clucking like chickens on stages. And like I said before, the stuff is great and fun and entertaining, but it really is such a massive tool that can help people. Um, some un lesser known ways to use hypnotherapy is like, if you did want to kind of get into like the woo, -woo realm a little bit, past life regression, dream right. interpretation. Mm -hmm. Um Breast enhan enhancement, I've never done that, but I thought it was just a fun thing to throw out there because if you think about breast enhancement, enhancement that's a hormone thing. So mm -hmm. when, when I start talking about the brain a little bit, um, obviously if we can influence the brain to influence the body, then you would be able to do something like breast enhancement. So I just threw that in there because that was fun. And then autoimmune healing, like I said, my example of vitiligo and my alopecia, mm -hmm is something also all un, um, more or less less unknown. So mm -hmm. hypnotherapy in some form is as old as civilization itself. It can be traced back as far as written history. If you think about Buddhist uh, monks, they practice extremely deep meditation, similar to hypnosis. I mean, they go very, very deep. Like I said before, basically the state of hypnosis is a brainwave state. So alpha and theta brainwaves, and that's all been measured by science. 
and is essentially the ability to move past the conscious mind or your ego or your logical thinking mind and it allows the ability to completely communicate with your subconscious mind so to break this down and still make it really easy to understand your conscious mind is your logical thinking in the moment part of your part of your mind so it's the captain of the ship it tells the crew to change direction and gives orders but it's usually not the workhorse um, conscious mind is typically what we make decisions with um, the conscious mind also is the one that's going to kick out ideas so when you try to tell your brain something that's completely different than what it believes the conscious mind is just going to kick that out of the way Regard. yeah yeah <laughs> so it won't let, allow you so that's why the state of hypnosis comes in handy so you can communicate directly this, with the subconscious so, so the subconscious how can, we, how can we use hypnosis to create confidence right because that's mm -hmm. what we want to use it for yeah so confidence and self -love. yes so hypnosis is an excellent tool for confidence and self-love because a lot of the time what we do is we have a, a lot of emotional barriers and baggage in the way, so a lot of that gets to be cleared, but we're literally just going to the center of who you are, your subconscious mind, and even connecting your heart when we do this work, and just literally programming, programming, you know, what it's like for you to be confident, what it's like to feel confident, because um, we're, when we tap into the emotional state, especially when we do it during hypnosis, that's where a lot of changes come from. So it's literally just a matter of communicating, you know, who you are, who you'd want to be as a confident person, what it would be like for you to be self-loving, you know, who would you be, what would you do, um, what would you have, you know, the be do have thing. Um, and that all gets programmed when you're in a state of, of hypnosis, because normally if you just try to like tell yourself that, it can take a long time. We all love affirmations, but that can take a really long time, and there's just so much to work through through when you're working through the emotional stuff that's tied to it. So hypnotherapy allows us to get to the source. So it allows for quicker results. Um, a lot of people just feel a nice release and reprogramming after they mm -hmm. do a session. Um, there's two ways to make changes. It's through repetition, which is why we do affirmations and tell ourselves things over and over again, which is, again, is still powerful, powerful work. It just can take a long time. Okay. And then going direct to the subconscious mind through something like the hypnotherapy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So through hypnotherapy, you said it could be guided or it could be self hypnotherapy. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So there's hypnotherapy where you're guided. Um, that's what a lot of people start off with. So if you're doing something like you know, because a lot of people just don't know the tool first. They don't know how to go deep into enough into state, you know, to be able to reprogram their brain. So there's guided. That would be if you hired me or worked with me and I, we did a session, I brought you through hypnotherapy and it's a great and it's a wonderful tool to be able to work with someone. So for instance, if you wanted to do something like pain management, that's more difficult to do on your own because most people can't get deep enough to actually you know, experience the numbing of their arm. Like even mm -hmm. I still have a hard time doing that when I do self-hypnosis on myself. Whereas when you work with someone else, you'd be able to relieve chronic pain probably in about four sessions. But with other things, um, self-confidence and self-love and your own healing, once you get the hang of it, and I'll show you guys that in a minute, you can just continually, you'll have, maybe have to do it a few times, make it part of your routine, but you do have the power in yourself to get into that nice, deep, it's just like a meditative state where you can reprogram your brain. Okay, awesome. So I can't wait yeah. to hear more. Are you going to tell us about this, about how to do it on our own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So whether you are working with someone else or you're doing it yourself, you are in full, full control. So it feels like deep relaxation. Uh, most people can't even recall what happens during a session. Um, when people go into it themselves, they feel like they're kind of in a daydream. Um, but for the most part, you still understand and you're still aware of your surroundings and what's going on. So self-hypnosis will open the doors to healing all by yourself. So like I had said before, it's similar to a state of deep meditation. So as many people, you know, try meditation, a lot of people give up because it's just so kind of hard. You can't turn your brain off, you know 
you fidget. Um, so I find it's actually easier than meditation because you're following a directive, you're giving yourself imagery, you're giving yourself to focus on instead of just trying to like you know, have your mind clean and let the thoughts go by, you actually get to focus on something. Mm -hmm. So there's always new hypnotherapy techniques um, that are always coming up and being improved and putting you also in an elevated emotional state where you're activating your heart magnetism and it really opens the door for just the self-love and the confidence work if that's what you're to use it for. Mm -hmm. So for self-hypnosis, there's a few things you can do. Um, you can always get a recording. That's really an easy way. Um, you can look at some of them on YouTube. Um, you can purchase some. I recommend uh, transout.com. I think that's where I've gotten a few from. So there's one. You put your headphones in and you listen to them. Second thing is you can always record your own. So mm -hmm. once you get used to the process and you want to be more specific about what you want to program your, you know, your, your mind to do and your self-healing, you can make your own. Um, but the first thing that you're going to want to do is try out a session with yourself. So I'll just give you a rundown of how that goes right now. Um, it's super simple and it's actually really relaxing. So I would definitely try it before bed. Um, if you want to get, you know, if you ever had trouble sleeping or you have a lot of anxiety and stuff that keeps you up, definitely even give it a try before bed. So what you do is you basically choose an extremely should, simple. Should we do it right now? Yeah, we can do it right now. Okay. Let yeah. Try. Let me get into, let me actually just make sure I didn't miss anything that else I wanted to go into. Okay. I think we're good. Um, so you, what you're going to do is you're going to really choose a really ex extremely simple like affirmation or focus point that you want to focus on while you're putting yourself in the state. So an example of mine had been, my hair has grown back quickly and full, fully. If I was to think about it in, you know, what I want to accomplish and bring it into the present tense, my hair has grown back quickly and fully. And I always put that in the positive because your mind cannot process a negative thought. And what I mean about a negative thought is if you say, I am not bald anymore, your subconscious mind is not going to understand that you're saying not bald. It's just going to create a picture of being bald, <laughs> which is something you don't want to um, do. So I always put it in a positive spin. You know, my hair has grown back quickly and fully. And when you think about this, this focus, then allow yourself to kind of bring up imagery and what type of scene does this represent to you? So your subconscious mind processes pictures, sounds, and feelings and these in turn create emotion because the words themselves don't create change. It's not the words. It's the actual, the emotions and the things and the visual imagery um, that gets brought up for you. So find the most descriptive way to create a visualization for yourself. So to do this, you typically need to know how be you best process information through your senses. Do you, are you visual? Do you really like to see things? Is that a primary sense for you? Are you auditory? Do you hear things? Are you kinesthetic do you touch do you feel tactile touch things actually touching your skin or do you feel emotion running through your body you know do you taste things <laughs> that one isn't too common as a primary sense um, or do you smell things so once you know that and when people have no idea you know what their primary sense is I ask them to describe a beach scene to a friend or imagine that a friend is there and like verbally explain what the beach looks like and a lot of people will find that they have keywords such as the color of the waves or how bright the sun is or um, how big and expansive the ocean looks. And those are all visual type words. Um, another person who really focuses on sounds will hear the waves crashing on the beach. Mm. Um, yeah, there's someone who likes to focus on feelings. They'll tend to... Uh, describe this beach scene about how cool the ocean water is, but how hot the sun is beating down on them. And if you are someone who does tend to smell, then you'll notice the salty ocean air smells and the French, fresh scent of the waves. That one's hard for me because that's not a primary sense of mine. Um, but you get the picture. You kind of start to understand like how you best take in information and that's going to be best how you create this scene in your in your mind. So 
with so that. I'm creating, I'm creating a scene to what I want things to look like. Yeah. So let's say you were to think about, um, you know, having a bald spot healed. So you have that thought, you know where it is in your head. What would that visually represent to you once it's all done? And that includes the sounds or feelings, um, uh, smells, anything that's a, that is there for you. So for me, it's literally would look like my hair, <laughs> like that, my hair up in a ponytail and there's hair there. <laughs> so it's very visual for me. And I just, that's the picture I create in my mind. Okay. So just, you're basically creating a little picture in your mind with your favorite sense, the one that's most powerful for you. Okay. And it's going to be this heavy in detail. You can write it down if you want to, or you can just make a note, mental note of what's important what's important to you. So usually people just create a little snapshot of, of what it's like and you get to feel into it and just feel how powerful it feels. Let the emotion run through you. So if it just makes you feel really good and just full of self love and just compassion for yourself and um, whatever emotions are really powerful for you, let those come through as you think of this picture. Cause that's kind of what, what you're going to want to hold on to. Um, other way I've also done this, I've actually envisioned the hair growing. Like I created a little movie in my mind where I actually got kind of weird and like actually saw it like growing. So you could do that too, if that feels right to you. It's, again, it's whatever it's going to feel most powerful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the second step. So the first step is kind of, is figure out this visual, the scene, I like to call it like a little movie scene or movie picture. And now you're actually going to plan a little, what's called an induction. That's the relaxation phase. So that's how you get past the conscious mind and that critical fact faculty, the thing that doesn't allow you to take in new information. Okay. So what typically you're going to do for this is if you've ever done a guided meditation, you're probably familiar with this, but it's being in a relaxed state and then you're going to be walking yourself down a staircase from 10 to zero. So I like to use a, a scene of me walking down a stone staircase to a beach. And that's basically just counting yourself down from 10 to nine, going deeper and deeper. You do it usually just in your head. You start to actually go into a state of hypnosis. So that's just the pre, just some stuff you wanna think of beforehand before you do a session. We call it a session, but it doesn't have to be that formal. You can literally just be laying in bed, you know, before you go to sleep. So to pull it all together, what you do is you get comfortable. You can be slouched or you can be in bed. If you find that you fall asleep easily, you might want to be more upright instead of mm -hmm. so you don't immediately fall asleep because you're going to be so relaxed. And what you can do is as you're in this position, you just tense your body like every muscle for a couple seconds and then just release everything and just kind of slouch and just really let yourself fully relax in a really comfortable position just so that you're fully relaxed. And you're going to focus on closing your eyes and focus on the focal point of your third eye. You can pretend there's like a blue swirling energy center here and you're just looking up a little bit and looking up actually has been proven to actually put you into also the state of hypnosis. So just the looking up, that's why you've always seen people with pendulums, you know, holding it above someone's face. You don't have to do that, but it's the fact, it's not the pendulum, it's the fact that you're looking up a little bit helps the brain get into the proper state of hypnosis. So focus on looking up internally at your third eye and you're gonna relax deeply. You're gonna relax deeply by taking three breaths in through your nose, now through your nose, your mouth. Just feel relaxation, just moving through your body. And then you're gonna count yourself down to deep, deep relaxation as you walk down a staircase. So in your head, you might go 10, going deeper and deeper, nine, drifting down, eight, Deeper and deeper, seven, going deeper now, six, deeper and deeper, five, going down, 
four, deeper and deeper, three, down, deeper, two, deeper and deeper, one, deeper and deeper, and zero, in a state of deep, deep hypnosis. And from here, you're just going to bring up that visualization scene and just focus solely on this. So it's just going to be one thing. You're like a laser beam. This is the only thing you're going to concentrate on is just this scene. Again, you're going to amplify whether it's the sounds that you hear the most. Those are more pow powerful for you. Or if it's the actual visual, the seeing, you're going to notice how bright the colors may be or how big the picture is. Um, but you're just going to focus on this and also allow positive emotion to come up for you and let that reverberate through your body. So what does it feel like to have, you know, the spot healed? What does it feel like to feel self-love? How does that feel in your body? How does that feel emotionally? And just allow yourself to be in the state, you know, we can do it for 10 to 20 minutes, half an hour if you get really good at it and repeat, you know, one to two times per day. So you might have to give it a try a couple times until you, you kind of get how it works. It can take you just a few minutes to get into that state once you get better at it. Um, but it's just a matter of deeply relaxing and just having that focal point, the thing that you're, you're focusing on healing. And that's it. Well, it totally took me there. <laughs> oh, yay. Good. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So what uh, I know you have offered a uh, yeah. precious gift to our audience. So they will get to go to your page for it. Yeah. So go ahead and the link will be in our materials and I think it'll be also in the email that we sent out, but yeah, it'll be a more in depth self, self hypnosis training. So I'll give a better example of that. Um, and just some easier ways too. So once you know how to do that new experience, how it is just some ways that you can get into it without having to tell yourself a story, um, or see the picture. So just a couple options and just, different ways to use it. So we talked a lot about the self-healing piece, um, which is going to be beneficial. Again, there's not a whole lot of science out there on the self-healing of autoimmune. It just hasn't been done. I've got my story, but there's lots of information out there about you know, helping to remove fear, move past fear, and build self-confidence and um, create ba better habits. So if you know that you need to work on your diet and your health, I mean, that stuff is, there's just so much out there about that. So um, I give, I'm going to give some more information about just how to really go in depth and use this tool. So it's a, a really nice primary tool you can use to really help you move past a lot of the barriers that, that we face when it comes to medical hair loss. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. And, and again, I just want to say that the purpose of the summit is to give you tools to help you live mm -hmm. your life, right? To have the joy that you deserve, the life that you want to have. Nobody here is saying, do this and your hair is going to grow. Because right. that's not the promise. I am not promising that. Yeah. That hasn't happened to me. What I do know is that you do get to live your life. You do get to be happy. You do get to create the life that you want. And that's what these tools are for. And hypnotherapy can be one of those. So thank you, Sarah, so much for being with us today. The information was amazing. I cannot wait to try your gift. Yeah. And hopefully I get to see you again soon. I'm really interested in this singing. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in our next interview.